Hi guys, welcome to the second installment of our video series with the project name Backendless University. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, packaging of Backendless, but before we go there, a couple of news items. Uh, first of all, the latest version of Backendless Pro has been submitted to Amazon Marketplace, so it will show up there uh, as soon as Amazon approves it. And second, we are continuing our progress on Backendless 4, which is going great, and we can't wait to uh, open up the curtains and uh, let you see what it is about. And uh, it is it is right now on schedule, so hopefully you'll be able to start playing with the next generation of Backendless soon. But today, as I said, we are talking about uh, packaging of Backendless. So Backendless is uh, an example of MBAS server, something that we talked about in the first video, and you can watch it by clicking the link on the screen right now. Backendless has three different uh, versions or three different ways that we package it. Number one is what we call Backendless Cloud. And Backendless Cloud is a centralized installation of Backendless that we run on our service in our data center that is available to anyone. You can sign up and start using it uh, without any downloads. Everything is pre-configured. There is a very low barrier of entry. It's, uh, it starts with a free plan that is very generous and you can build uh, rather solid applications with uh, Backendless Cloud. It is a sort of a shared hosting because multiple applications that are being created, they are all running in Backendless Cloud. As a result, the same installation is handling multiple uh, applications. Uh, they're basically sharing all the resources in the computers and the file system and everything else that is uh, uh, running in there. We do, we do proper isolation of the resources, so one application obviously cannot see files and data of another application. However, there is that collocation going on in Backendless Cloud. Second, is what we call managed backendless. And managed backendless conceptually is almost identical to backendless cloud with a one very important difference, or maybe just a few important differences. So with backendless cloud being a shared hosting or shared application environment, managed backendless is a dedicated uh, application environment. So it's essentially the same installation of backendless, but we do it for specific application for specific customer. As a result, all the data that is running with a managed backendless is completely isolated from anybody else. It's a completely isolated, dedicated installation of backendless. As a result, all the business processes that make backendless what it is as far as uh, task execution or sending out push notifications or writing to the database, whatever it is, they are completely running in isolation. So no other application can take the resources of the computers allocated to manage backendless away from what they're doing. As a result, the, uh, the guarantee of the execution, of successful execution for pretty much all the tasks running in backendless, in managed backendless, is significantly higher. And I will talk about some additional uh, benefits uh, as soon as we complete this list. And number three, uh, another way of uh, packaging of Backendless is a product that is called Backendless Pro. And Backendless Pro is a version of Backendless. It's the complete Backendless platform that you can download and install on your computer. Essentially, you're going to get exactly the same functionality uh, that you would see either with Backendless Cloud or Managed Backendless, but all of that functionality is going to be running on your computer. And it could be a developer's computer, it could be a computer in your data center, it could be a computer in the cloud. So you could actually get the installer, put it on the instance in uh, Google Cloud or Oracle Cloud or Amazon uh, Web Services, and you will have a complete installation of Backendless right there. So what are the functional differences, you would uh, ask? Here in Backendless Cloud, there are some functional limitations that we built into that free version, because otherwise 
it would be completely unlimited for free. It doesn't really make sense from the business perspective. So the free version here has some limitations that you can overcome by purchasing what we call function packs from the marketplace. For example, uh, the free version comes with a 20 gigabytes of file space. If you need more file space, you can buy a function pack that increases the file space for your application to whatever limit. Uh, and some other examples, let's say if you want some additional custom roles, you can buy those custom roles. If you want to extend the uh, time for the business logic execution, you can buy a function pack, so, and so on. And we'll talk about limits of the free plan and function packs and marketplace in the future videos. But uh, essentially, the, the point here from the packaging perspective is Backendless Cloud has those functional limits. Managed Backendless and Backendless Pro have no functional limits whatsoever. So here it's a completely unlocked, so to speak, version of Backendless. With Managed Backendless, since this is a managed version that we monitor 24 by 7, we do scheduled backups, we provide uptime guarantee and so on, there, is, there are really just two things that would be limiting. One is the number of API requests per second that the pricing is actually based on, and second is the file space. So other than that, all other limits are removed. With Backendless Pro, completely all limits are removed. So it's a fully unlocked, completely open, unrestricted, limitless version of Backendless. Now, uh, so from the pricing perspective, this one starts out as free. This one I would put as uh, dollar dollar, and this one is dollar 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 for the reason that this one really gives you the whole platform without any limitations and you can run it on your service. Here you get API requests per second and file space limitations, but it's fully managed and there is a guaranteed uptime, and this one starts as free. So there are three versions, as you can see, with some uh, obvious benefits for each one of them, and uh, pretty much everyone starts out right here, and that's what, I, that's what I would recommend. Start building with the cloud version. Once your app starts growing, and you need to get more resources, both from support perspective and from the way application performs and consider migrating to one of these two. Thank you and stay tuned for more videos.